Um, welcome to the second talk of the day. Um, the talk is uh, titled A Pillar of Smoke Notes from Contemporary Turkey. Um, Ilgin Deniz Askilulu is from Turkey and studied philosophy in Galatasaray and Sorbonne universities. She's worked as a writer and editor in several photography projects. Uh, she's worked at the Museum of Innocence, Didi Mart, and Istanbul Biennale. Uh, Ilgin has been in charge of the exhibitions program of Operation Room Art Space in Istanbul since 2014. And she's also been working for Cappadox uh, Contemporary Art Program since its second edition in 2016. Uh, she's currently the associate curator of Fulia Erdemji for the fourth edition of the program titled Silence. Uh, she's also part of the Photo Kathmandu Residency Program, so it's up to you. Thanks. Hello. Uh, it's so nice to be here. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I, I've seen amazing presentations so far, so <laughs> I'm excited for mine as well. Uh, well, um, as we can understand from the title, it's about an exhibition uh, which was commissioned by the uh, Hong uh, Kong Festival last year, and it was first exhibited um, throughout summer until uh, two weeks ago. It was on in art. And then right now, uh, well, um, it will have follow-up shows. One will be in Paris, um, beginning from 15th of November until January 15th. I just learned that like five minutes ago. And then um, it will be, again, uh, it was one of the shows who, has been, who have been selected uh, to be shown in uh, in Jimei, China, uh, the other art festival uh, there in China. So, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, exactly a year ago, um, the directing committee, um, they, um, I mean, every year they're uh, sort of inviting one country, uh, let's say off-center or non-European country to have a big show. So they uh, commission um, curators from those countries together with some, sometimes with uh, European uh, curators. So this is how uh, the project found me actually uh, last year in October. And then um, we immediately started working about the conceptual framework. So, and I will try to give a bit of uh, insight about Turkey and the ongoing situation in the country, but before all of these, I want to use my time in history and quote some writer, uh, some writer's sort of comment about the exhibition, which was shown in The Guardian. Just to baffle you a little bit, because it's all about confusion anyway. Um, well, where is Turkey? Turkey is there. He says hello, and we are here. So, and this is one of those very famous expedition maps. Um, uh, why am I showing this map? Is because um, recently I've been reading a history book, uh, which is becoming very popular, and uh, it's about sort of. Uh, rethinking on history with a non-European, uh, non-Eurocentric approach, let's say, and uh, it's it's actually pointing out the the importance of this geography, let's say, um, uh, mainly uh, the Silk Road, the Asia Minor th through uh, Himalayas and Indian continent, uh, as we can see. Um, the, the book belongs to Peter Frankopan, and he says, just as anatomy explains how the body functions, understanding these connections allows us to understand how the world works. Um, also, uh, he's quoting um, some mythology, saying that uh, at the time, Zeus uh, actually released two eagles uh, in, to the world. Uh, and then uh, at their junction point, like where the eagles met again, because they go totally to the opposite ways. Yeah. Uh, according to the story, the myth, um, the eagles met uh, in, at the middle point of, of the world, which must be somewhere between the Black Sea and the Himalayas. 
Well, um, this place, this geography is so special that it has been the bridge between East and West in the very crossroads of civilization. Far from being on the fringe of global affairs, these countries lie at its very center as they've gone since the beginning of history. So what happened in that geography is just a little, little <laughs> excerpt. Uh, in Mesopotamia, in the borders of modern Turkey and Iraq, such things have been invented some while ago. Real-time map maps, writing, astronomy, first urban settlement, agriculture, religion even. Uh, no, not iPhone or SpaceX. <laughs> also philosophy. Well, currently in modern Turkey, we have this much differences, this much different ethnicities and languages. So it's really hard to define um, like um, what Turk is and uh, but um, I'm just trying to give you a bit more insight why it's been, it has been having so many conflicts throughout history. Of course, a long list of wars will continue. <laughs> um, well, this is, this is a map that I just Googled and found. Uh, it is actually, it's very interesting because you can actually switch the filter uh, you can you can actually measure it through by the impact on U.S. interests, <laughs> and it gives you different colors. It's amazing. And um, well, there is Turkey. Turkey is drinking martini at the crossroads, <laughs> having fun over there. Well, um, speaking of fridge. <coughs> I think, I mean, for most of you who think about like Istanbul or Turkey, this must be the first picture. Uh, well, this is Bosphorus Bridge. It was made, I mean, it's connecting Europe to Asia, as we all know. And uh, it was made in the 70s, and its name has changed very recently. I wonder why. <laughs> it's absolutely nonsense. Uh, in 2016, uh, there has been a coup attempt um, by a group in army. Uh, they tried to uh, have the have the rule on themselves. Um, well, it's very con like controversial to talk about it, but anyway, the bridge's name has changed overnight, and then uh, that had I mean, and they put signages all around the city showing this new name of the bridge. It, it happened in one night. I will go back to this coup attempt um, later on, but the same bridge was like that five years ago. Um, well, this was the beginning of Gezi protests, maybe. I mean, I will try to give a bit of information about that as well. Uh, because when, when we talk about the uh, uh, an oppressive regime also, uh, like, I think it's very important to put out how people react to it, right? So, people actually are quite reactive. These are, like, some of our iconic pictures from Gizi times. Um, basically, these are the first days when um, people um, uh, reclaimed the park. Uh, Shall I talk about it a little bit? Well, um, Gezi protests have begun uh, with a, a basically uh, in Taksim Square, which is like the very center of uh, the, the city of Istanbul. And uh, there is actually a very, um, very old uh, park with, um, I don't know, some uh, 200 very old trees. And um, one day, um, with caterpillars, they entered the park without any, without asking to to any of the, uh, any people from from uh, from the community uh, around the park uh, whatsoever, in order to make a shopping mall, which will look like exactly like a military caserne, uh, which was uh, destroyed uh, some hundred years ago. Uh, symbolizing Ottoman power, etc., over other minorities in the country already. And uh, 
in the very uh, history of Taksim Square, you have uh, Armenian cemetery. Like, this is a very symbolic place, and um, since uh, 1977, which is like the youth of my father, uh, the the very center, uh, very central square of Istanbul, Taksim Square, was um, shut down uh, for 30 some 30 something years, and uh, it was uh, illegal to make protestation there. So. Um, Gezi Park was in between all of this complex Taksim Square uh, complex, let's say, uh, was one of those places where you uh, just pass by during the day, you don't even sit down there because mostly homeless people are sleeping over and uh, you don't have nice tea houses but the trees are big and they have nice shadows and even if you don't use it, you want the park there. <laughs> is no question. So, um, so when they started to dig the park uh, with the caterpillar, uh, some people, just some young people, they, they called each other and then together with a well-renowned um, film director, they stopped the caterpillar saying you don't have a right to do that. Um, and then in a very short while, in, in one day, um, people started to put their tents on in the park. At, at first, I, I, I mean, I was there, and it was 27th of May, and uh, we were just 10 tents or something, and some hundreds of people drinking beer just to, I mean, we, we, we didn't know what to do. We just squatted the park and uh, waiting. I don't know what's going to happen. We, we had no idea. So some some stayed the night over, some left through the dawn, and uh, a couple of days passed like that uh, until uh, until the morning of um, 31st of May that police entered to the park and uh, emptied it completely. Um, I, I wasn't there that very day, but then um, through 1st of June, um, I mean, normally you cannot walk on that bridge. So actually, like thousands of people, uh, since ferries have been stopped, they weren't working. Uh, so people started to walk from Asian side to the European side in order to get to the park. Well, in a very short while, it happened to be a like in a big thing, and all the other in all the other cities. Uh, most of them uh, was uh, Ankara, Izmir, like big cities with big communities. Also, the Ardakir, uh, where most of the Turkish population lives. Uh, they started to reclaim the parks and put their tents on. And there have been a series of clashes. Well, in total, 8 million people um, attended to these protests, of which 22 died and uh, 5,000 have been taken into custody and it, it lasted from 27th of May until 20th of August until the park has been emptied back again by the police. These pictures have been taken by NARP Photos uh, Collective. I mean, it's a photo agency and uh, they took part with some pictures in uh, a Pillar of Smoke project as well, so I wanted to put some of those pictures. Well, I mean, <laughs> just a couple of days ago, I was watching um, a uh, Tibetan monk speaking about uh, the danger. Uh, he was saying, um, well, we are in danger. And then um, the filmmaker asks, like, what, what, what are you talking about? The danger of losing our compassion. Like to whom? The danger to lose our compassion that we have for the Chinese because of <laughs> talking about the invasion. Well, I mean, um, I, I with all due respect, uh, I just can't achieve <laughs> to have this compassion 
against album, of course, and none of those were readers. So I wanted to put a sort of a love picture of them. Well, um, wh the reason why I'm talking about Gezi Park because actually um, it was an unexpected uh, social uprising and it was five years ago and ever since everything went even worse. So, uh, well, uh, at those times we were actually addressing to our beloved um, Prime Minister, Minister back then, but in this five years of scope he, he managed to become the president of the country. So um, he was just shutting down YouTube and uh, right now you need to access to Wikipedia, even to Wikipedia through all those different, you know, VPN connections and whatsoever. Um, so, uh, I was talking about the coup attempt, right? So, it was in 2016, and uh, well, on that, after that very day on, uh, well, ever since, it was 15th of July, by the way, ever since we are under emergency state, like, uh, <laughs> it's been more than two years now. And uh, well, this much of channels and radio stations, newspapers and magazines and publishing houses have been shut down completely. And the reason why uh, Erdogan is like uh, throwing words against Twitter is because um, Twitter and social media has become one of those very important tools for these protests because uh, as in every world, in Tahrir, in, uh, in uh, Occupy, in, uh, in New York, in all other places, um, when you have like animal documentaries on the TV, uh, you have a reality going on the street. So we also adopted uh, the 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 slogan uh, "Revolution will not be televised." So uh, and everybody was an active journalist during uh, the protest and all the other um, social uprisings that happened uh, in the following days, years. Well, um, these statistics are really um, new. Um, the emergency legislation. Well, uh, these are only the um, the explosions that happened in Turkey during the last three years. And of course these, I mean, the explosions are well listed, but uh, we can never be sure about the number of deaths or wounded people or the ones who have been taken into custody, the ones who got lost. Well, when it comes to uh, freedom of speech, uh, Turkey is the worst country by far statistics. Um, and of course, it's, um, it's not only Turkey's fault, I think. <laughs> also, um, there have been a lot of um, campaigns uh, related to freedom of speech uh, led by academicians and uh, most of them they lost their jobs, they needed to leave the country in order to go on teaching or some of them became alcoholics of course. Well. Speaking of the project, how did it come to this? Well, um, it was of course a bit challenging because uh, I, I spent most of my life in Istanbul and in order to be able to look at uh, all these happenings from afar and to keep my, let's say, objectivity in order to better serve uh, to an international community in art. Uh, I needed to uh, sort of step on um, certain things that that I've been um, digesting, let's say, since 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 
since I was born. So, um, well, I want to talk about the title a little bit. Uh, um, somehow, um, I, I found myself reading a lot of um, like disaster in order to sort of resize my conception about uh, what's going on. And of course, um, the, the directing committee of ARN, they, uh, when they are inviting uh, some inviting projects um, focused on a certain place, uh, country, they're not actually limiting you by saying, of, or, okay, you, you should focus on this topic, um, this and that. So actually, um, uh, focusing on um, the actuality in Turkey uh, was my choice together with my co-curator, Jan Perro. So, um, because I, I felt the most urgent was that to talk about. I, I, could, I could prefer working on an archival thing or better do something about more aesthetics, but um, it was impossible, I think. So, um, so this is why most of the works that took part in the project have been uh, produced after 2010, even 13, quite new, most of them. Um, so this was the key visual uh, of the of the exhibition, and um, it, it's taken by Sinan Dishli. Um, it was the first picture that you see when you entered to the first room. Uh, I'm going to show you some videos later on. Uh, well, the reason why I chose this because also. Um, this whirlwind, I mean, Sinan goes every year since she's from Urfa, which is, uh, you know, which is in Mesopotamia, today's Turkey in the southern eastern part. And uh, well, she goes there every summer, and only just one day uh, this um, natural event happened before her eyes uh, because of this. Um, the irrigation project that have been led since the uh, 90s in the southeastern part of Turkey. Uh, most of, uh, since the, the source of the of Euphrat and Tigris rivers, uh, the, since they were born uh, in, uh, in Turkey. So um, the irrigation project actually uh, kept uh, other parts of uh, lands who share the same rivers without water. So it, it also changed uh, the, the, um, the sort of ecology there. So this is why these um, sort of uh, interesting natural phenomena is happening, uh, as, well, as well as the war itself. Uh, I don't even know, need to talk about that, I think, as we all know. So to be able to talk about the actuality, of course, I. Uh, I, my position was to work with uh, people who uh, didn't lose their touch with Turkey and all the names uh, which are here are, I mean, they are most, most of the time based in uh, Istanbul still today. Um, so, well, uh, it's in a kind of way, um, since I also, like, um, when I first started, uh, before even I, I uh, started my curatorial practices, I was um, an editor of a very new uh, photojournalism agency, um, like five, six years ago. So um, I had this background about documentary photography and how um, documentary people look, look around. Uh, then I started working in contemporary art and uh, in a kind of way when um, when we when I needed to talk about most about what's happening before 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 our eyes uh, I think it was the best way to to invite um, different approaches to a about a certain um, 
topic around a certain topic, let's say. So um, in the Pillar of Smoke project, we have 140 journals, uh, journalism collective. It's basically a Twitter account. Right now, they are running a website as well. Um, how they started doing, um, well, they, they have uh, around a million of followers right now, and it's, um, it is constituting one of the most, um, let's say, vibrant uh, alternative media organs today in Turkey. Uh, and they are the first ones who brought a citizen, jour citizen journalism concept to Turkey. And um, they all their practice evolved mostly with Gezi incidents. Um, but how they started was totally different. Not totally different, but was different. Uh, in 2012, um, um, already in the borders of Turkey with Syria, uh, uh, people were hearing, people were feeling war uh, in a very brutal way. But it, but these events has, have never uh, taken uh, place in the media, of course. So uh, one day, uh, the founders of 140 journals, they um, they just say, oh, okay, I mean, we, I mean, it is really happening. Uh, we should, we should go and do it ourselves. So they started uh, broadcasting uh, the bombings in the border. That's how they started. And then with Gezi incidents, they happen to have uh, many more followers. Uh, so today they have different projects. Um, and for a pillar of smoke, I commissioned them to have uh, six videos uh, which talk about the recent history in Turkey in order to give uh, an insight to the, to the, to the audience uh, in R. Um, and NAR Photos Agency, they are also an independent uh, photography agency. Um, they also have film, some film projects. And uh, we also took some parts of Occupy Gezi Tumblr. These are totally anonymous pictures. Um, and uh, you will see later on, uh, we, we just put uh, on a wall something. So, and the rest of the names, they are either um, working as photographers, photojournalists, or visual artists with different disciplines. Um, the, the, uh, <coughs> oh yeah, I was also talking about the title, right? Um, well, somehow um, the the word pillar was turning in my head. Uh, I think there is a, I mean, as much as it was a sort of a mental image, uh, it made sense because um, uh, a column, uh, a pillar, is actually a stand. Is is it's been being compressed by gravity and by other whatever it has on top of it uh, by carrying it let's say so um, well uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's an architectural uh, m a member uh, in element in a kind of way so um, when I think about the intellectuals in Turkey and the, this struggle, and by intellectual I don't mean only academicians or writers, uh, I mean any, any, any type of people who, can, who is able to criticize, who is able to question, and then to defend their rights. Uh, it can be any, any, any person. Uh, so this... Um, this word pillar was uh, made so much sense one of a sudden, and then uh, the key image followed that uh, by chance. Um, a pillar of cloud, uh, <coughs> as a as a as a metaphor, it exists in Torah, in uh, in the Bible, in Quran, uh, as um, to talk about theophany, like how uh, God uh, shows itself, is the apocalypse at the same time the salvation um, so I was just thinking about this uh, because I mean we needed to restart from somewhere because uh, apparently it wasn't going well uh, so at those points that you know people <laughs> in order to restart um, sort of 
uh, this, this disaster should happen or something. But since cloud is not something man-made, man I, I rather went for naming it smoke because smoke um, is, 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 is something man-made. Also, um, also the, the act of burning itself is, uh, is very much existent in, um, in Anatolian uh, pagan beliefs. You say only by burning yourself you you uh, reached the point of spiritual maturity. It it reminds me of war. It reminds me of cooking. Um, so this is why um, a pillar of smoke. It, this is how it happened. Uh, so we can actually. Oh. So yeah. Sinan had two pictures, and um, the other one around here is uh, remains of Ponyonte. Uh, it is again uh, in this uh, twelve thousand year old, the, uh, the, the first, the first uh, temple ever found so far um, in the world. It's located in Urfa, same region. Uh, so. Um, She's actually uh, there around the temple and looking at the stars, trying to... Uh, by the way, the, the photo has been taken only by moonlight, so it took like a night. <laughs> uh, and uh, she had a sculpture. Because of those water politics, um, uh, she sort of um, associated uh, the water as life-giving and also life-taking because those rivers are so important that uh, they also take lives as much as they do life. Um, well, um, the exhibition took place in a, in a place called Maison de Tante. Uh, so the, the house was totally uh, delict uh, when, uh, when they gave us um, the place. Uh, only a year before we, we used it, uh, it was used by Roger Bellen, so uh, you know his work. The, the house was just falling apart. <laughs> and uh, so we, we actually wanted to keep the, the, um, the identity of the house, um, which is pretty much Turkey's situation. So uh, it's, um, we made this site-specific installation, tried to use different holes uh, in the house. And uh, the, this is a work by uh, Furkan Temir, uh, he's a very young photographer. He has a series called What Makes a War. And uh, these were taken in 2016 when he went there. And um, well, uh, these are, these, these places, uh, they they are in the borders of Turkey for whom who claim that war is in Syria, not in Turkey. Uh, he uh, traveled between the villages in the southeastern part of Turkey to document the daily life there. So he had such an installation there. <coughs> <coughs> well, this is uh, another room. So basically, um, as you will uh, also uh, notice um, in time when we go over the slides, that um, there was this idea of um, taking reality in different ways through visual artists' uh, own setups uh, over fic fictionary world, which is reflecting very much uh, how um, as, as, a, as, a, as an outcome that they had uh, of how they have been fed by, um, by the country itself. So um, as much as we had like documentary style works, we had also very much, uh, let's say, um, conceptual works like that. It 
it was a dark room, much better. Well, here uh, we see a, a sculpture of Mehmet ul So he's, um, he actually, um, uh, right now is based in Paris. And uh, in between do these, uh, you know, plexi houses, uh, he cannot get to reach to the tree. This was an installation which was very interesting by Ali Taptik. Uh, well, basically, um, what we had as an installation is that um, in the, back in the 90s, uh, the Tropic of uh, Capricorn by uh, Henry Miller, this erotic uh, novel of his, uh, has been censored. Uh, and. Uh, and the, the, the sens censoring committee, um, they actually republished the book with, uh, with some lines and paragraphs which are depicting those uh, sex scenes in, in, the, in the novel. So they actually sort of <laughs> um, cut it out, the whole novel, uh, and it didn't make any sense anymore. So. Uh, and against this uh, idea of censorship, uh, over 20 publishing houses, they, uh, they published a collective work uh, in which you could find uh, the lines censored together with uh, you know, black uh, underlining on top of them. So uh, they, they, they said, this is our collective work, this is our common, pub uh, common publication. Uh, just as a protest, and of course they couldn't censor that because it was already censored by itself. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, uh, anyway, I think we skipped a room, but it's fine. Um, so um, after this room, there was another. Um, room with projection, but um, if you have time, then I, I can show it to you with the whole video. Anyway, so in one of those videos in the first floor, um, we had um, Gezi, uh, uh, NAR photos, uh, collectives, uh, Gezi pictures, and, oops, something is going wrong here, but <laughs> anyway, I think it just runs itself at the back, but. Uh, so uh, we had different types of works, uh, actually taking a social protests um, in different ways. Um, for example, in this work that we are seeing here, uh, Korhan Karoisal's uh, work, he uh, he um, yeah, in, throughout two, two two years for two years he followed every every kind of uh, social gatherings to to. to to check like what what collectivism means in today's Turkey, not just um, um, protests against the government or stuff like that, but also like um, like reunions, religious reunions, or uh, you know um, uh, Kurdish people demonstrating for certain certain reasons or. Um, some groups of people uh, disguised in uh, Ottoman Janissaries, uh, you know, like celebrating something, some event which was like uh, 500 years ago, uh, just to um, just to check how people are engaged in uh, collectivism uh, bodily uh, in Turkey today. And here uh, we had those six videos made by 140 journals. And we go upstairs from here. Yeah. Sorry. Something is terribly wrong. <coughs> yeah. Uh, well, just to give you a like a quick idea, those six videos had such and such topics 
just like a compressed uh, uh, re recent history of Turkey. So upstairs we had Ali Kazma's videos, um, he's a visual artist. Uh, um, we hosted two videos of him, um, school and prison, um, because in a in a in a country with, where you had like most of the intellectuals have been imprisoned for so many years, uh, there are there is a huge literature on how prisons became some sort of a school for them, how, how possibly uh, the imprisoned intellectuals uh, have, been, has, have been influential for, for other, uh, um, other people in the jail. Some became writers, some became painters, and um, they actually um, uh, kept on their, their, their struggle in the, uh, in, in the prison. So this is why uh, I, we, we wanted to put uh, two videos uh, like that. And also um, in this section when, uh, in which we, we are entering right now, we had uh, Chadash Erdogan's control series. Uh, let's see a little bit. Hello. <laughs> so how do we do that? I don't know, somehow uh, on the computer it was working, but right now since we are connected, I think there's a problem. It just, oh yeah, okay. Uh, well, um, <coughs> Chada Sardon is also a very young self-taught photographer and uh, he uh, worked on uh, the, the team control. Um, between the years 2015-2016 uh, for two years and uh, uh, under this uh, he, he actually um, treated uh, the, the concept with, uh, with the aid of uh, three uh, different narratives, I mean seemingly different from each other. One is uh, the illegal dog fights uh, happening in uh, Istanbul's quarters at night. The other one is um, sex workers stories and uh, also some uh, um, uh, sex parties, like gatherings. Uh, the third one is uh, is in um, one of those, one of very violent, uh, let's say, quarters uh, in Istanbul, uh, Gazi quarter. Uh, the, the armed groups, like political armed groups, uh, their uh, night um, strollings, let's say, he, uh, how they uh, got into um, conflict with different groups from the same quarter, because they, their uh, political views, uh, beliefs are different. Uh, so basically, uh, the daily life, like the interiors of uh, of, of the nightlife in Istanbul. So, um, the installation, uh, well, be back in 2016, uh, the book, uh, the, 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 the book was published by Akina Books, uh, uh, with this, uh, who actually was the, how work first uh, appeared in, a, in an extended way, but before on uh, BJP or other sources, um, they, they hosted uh, Chardash's work. And then in March, uh, Akina published um, the book. And then uh, this following, I mean, in the following months, in September, same year, uh, he, he got imprisoned for six months. Uh, 
I mean, these are just glimpses from the installation. This was the most extended sort of uh, showcase of this work. I tried to put every image in a kind of way and try to intersect three different narratives even more together in a, let's say, cinematic way. I will share some spreads later on. And I will share the story how he got detained because it's, um, it's uh, sort of a, and it never works. Well, basically, uh, this is how the work looks like. Um, well, uh, Chabash was imprisoned um, when he was taking the picture of the sky. Um, uh, basically, he was uh, just walking around with his iPhone, not even with his camera, not as he wasn't there as a journalist. But um, when he was uh, having a walk around this park, and then um, he, uh, he, he actually noticed it, but didn't pay so much attention. There was a big security camera just uh, right um, at his right side, let's say, and he was taking the picture of the sky between two buildings. You know, we like such slices of sky because we don't see the sky that much anymore. Uh, so um, a night watchman uh, just approached him saying like you can't do this, you can't take pictures here, uh, what are you up to, things like that. And he's like no, I mean I, I'm not doing anything, I was just you know playing um, etc. But without any word he got, uh, he got um, beaten by some, you know, policemen who just interfered very quickly and then they took him to the prison and, um, well, and then they charged him for so many different, uh, uh, let's say, um, reasons that they were all um, very superficial, supernatural <laughs> even. <laughs> These are those armed, armed groups. Uh, this is just a little uh, quote from uh, his letter that he wrote from prison. Um, just to give you a, a, an idea of how it was. And then for six months, he couldn't have the right to get into the court. Um, and then uh, in one case, um, he actually uh, got out but after having spent six months in the prison. So actually, um, he wasn't doing anything illegal at that moment, but uh, he has been followed by uh, the police since a while because of uh, his work that has been published in, uh, in international media because um, most of the journalists in Turkey right now, they cannot have their work uh, in, the, in the national media. So this is, um, the, again, some parts of from the second floor, right after um, Chaudai's installation, we had uh, Shenai's work, Shenai Martinova. So she, um, well, she's basically um, taking pictures of the people she sees on the streets of Istanbul, night time, again. Uh, and she has been uh, one of the uh, um, 
She has been chosen as uh, the candidate to uh, Madame Figaro, a prize. She didn't get it. And this room belongs to Kirchhoff by Hans work. Uh, you remember the list of bombings uh, that I showed previously? Uh, well, basically, with a with a very like huge teleobjective, um, Kirchhoff takes uh, portraits of people looking at uh, very recent uh, explosion scenes uh, to catch their uh, facial impressions, expression. These were like really, very really large uh, prints. And in this room, we hosted uh, Jihan Deviral's um, series called Will the World End in a Daytime? Uh, well, this is a, a bit of like how a daily life can be eerie in Istanbul because actually, um, well, um, since uh, 1999, uh, Istanbul is expecting a, a big earthquake, uh, a, which whose epicenter will be the islands, Princess Islands, in the middle of Marmara Sea. So we have some nine years to go, I think. Uh, back in those days, uh, all the scientists said that in scope of 30 years, there will be a huge earthquake in this region. So um, Istanbul, I mean, as well as uh, getting threatened by the government, politics, this and that, uh, the city is also um, under threat by the nature itself, just like here. <laughs> and. Uh, Jihan's work, um, I will show you some, some slides. And in this room, uh, we had um, Nilbar Güreş's uh, work. She's mostly, uh, she doesn't live in Turkey anymore, but uh, she is mostly working on identity issues, uh, family, um, She's questioning uh, tradition from her perspective as a, as a queer woman. Um, <coughs> and then in the last room, one of the last rooms, we hosted, uh, yeah, the, the only foreigner, uh, let's say, image maker in the in scope of this exhibition was Mathias de Pardon. Uh, he's, he's a French photojournalist. He lived uh, almost uh, more than five years, six, around six years in Istanbul. And he uh, operated uh, both in Istanbul and in the region, um, <coughs> both for different publications and for his uh, own uh, documentary projects. So um, when he was again on, uh, on, on an assignment, uh, when he was in the uh, southeastern part of Turkey, uh, he got. He, he was taken into custody uh, for for a couple of weeks, uh, and then he got released, and he needed to leave Turkey right after, uh, because also his uh, press card was um, was has been expired, this and that, and uh, many different uh, reasons followed. So he uh, right now is based in Paris, but still very willing to uh, you know work on Turkey. So oh, this was the last picture. <laughs> and that was it. <coughs> well, um, yeah, I just wanted to share, I mean, I wanted to highlight just a little bit Dion's work as well. He's taking pictures of those very <coughs> eerie stress points in a daily life in Istanbul. He finds some shapes. Uh, he doesn't even uh, give a reference to 
to a certain city, a part of this picture, actually, you don't see in Istanbul. <laughs> well, speaking of that, uh, I mean, I for, for other projects, for another project that I've been in since a couple of years, um, I've been in touch with a geologist uh, very closely. And I asked him if there is a chance that the volcano may explode uh, in Turkey near Ankara so that <laughs> the government will fall at some point. And he told me, no, I mean, no volcano, no chance for a volcano, but there is a chance that the meteor would, <laughs> would hit. <laughs> so, you know. And I wanted to uh, like give a little quote from Pirsu <laughs> Voila, Turkey says thank you <laughs> for listening to me. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, we'll take questions if there are any. We have 10 minutes or so. No questions? Uh, well, I have I have been away since six weeks. Yeah, July. July, I I wasn't there. Well, uh, so. Yeah, uh, ab about about coup attempt again. I think so. Yes, yeah, it's the anniversary. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The also, they have it in Illinois. They have it in different parts of yeah. Istanbul. You were there in July. June, July, August. Oh, okay. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> I love Istanbul. So, yeah. As a tourist, it's so. Uh, okay, so and it's on sale. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I didn't even talk about that. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah. I mean, they are demonstrating like different, like graphic images, also um, sort of uh, you know quake four type of. Uh, very like um, how can I say 3D modelings of like which is sort of taking this cool attempt in a in a heroic way. Uh, so it's really it's a huge body of work. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So I was in Istanbul in 2006 and then back in 2014, and like the gentleman was saying, you can't really tell much. A lot of the times, if you're a tourist, um, that there are things that are shifting. So how has it been now? You said since when? In 2006, Six. and then 2014 again. Well, it's In 2006, there was a lot of excitement. As, at least that's what I was yeah. told by people there, because mm -hmm. there was this huge moment where we were, Turkey was we going were, to be part of EU. Yes, you are trying to <laughs> keep it up with Copenhagen, Krita, 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 but it never and then, Yeah, and then Erdogan was like, you know, yeah. F you, we don't need that. And in 2014, it just seemed calm mm -hmm. for, for as a tourist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what's the... Well, I mean, uh, right now, um, of course, I mean, even in the war zones, you have daily life, you have a system, you have, you are rearranging and uh, the life goes on, of course. Um, well, I mean, I, I cannot say that um, you, you can be threatened by something as a tourist. Well, I mean, I didn't list here uh, all the uh, explosions that have, have happened all around the world since two years. Uh, so, because, I mean, we're talking about Turkey only here. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. Li life goes on, of course, and uh, and uh, you know, th things are subject to change because, uh, as I said, uh, we are expecting a meteor hit or something. So. <laughs> but you know, I mean, um, what can I say? As, as a tourist, you would uh, you wouldn't have any problem. But um, well, I was working in a very touristic place. Uh, since three years now, and I was feeling the the um, that tourists really stopped to come to Turkey. Um, but in Istanbul, you don't feel that because we are like I don't know some twenty million anyway uh, as residents. Um, but I can say that since a year, I mean, 
actually this these bombings if we look at the list um, in 2017 after this huge bomb which happened uh, in the New Year's Eve uh, after that actually nothing really big happened in the big cities so uh, people uh, started to uh, come to Istanbul because they love it <laughs> And I, I could I could actually see myself this summer that um, some new venues were opening and you know uh, there is a lot going on of course all around <coughs> and even in the southeastern part uh, I visited the Ardukur for different reasons also there uh, um, the thing is in Turkey you have uh, you have the urgencies in front of your eyes every day. Like you have a, a place which has been just bombed and you need to go to school and to work and you have this uh, very lively <laughs> attitude against the life. Uh, so um, this is only the difference uh, maybe I can say from any other part of the world. Thank you so much. Uh, so that's the end of the talk series for the opening week. Um, I would just like to remind everyone that uh, October 26 onwards, we're going to have more talks as our programming week begins. Uh, please take a copy of the programming week. Uh, it's an outside by the door and give it to your friends and family. Please visit at all times of the day. I think Guru Kahnamdu Crew has done a really good job with the lighting. So it's a really great experience whether you come during the day or uh, during night time. And we also have exhibitions in Tamil and uh, in Kathmandu near Basantapur. And uh, we hope we'll see you back in a couple of weeks. And, <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. <laughs>